How's everyone's afternoon going? Hi Barb, hi Sonia, hi Zoa, Katie. And everyone else I've missed, hi Liz. Double check. All right. I want to make sure I had you guys on cell service and not Wi Fi so I don't lose you. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Sarah. Welcome. Hi, Leslie. today too so maybe I'll try to get those done on live too Alejandra your kids start school next week wow schools around here don't start for about another month Miss Lady D you're trying your hand at digitizing an applique number that's fun what digitizing software do you use? Um, I've dabbled in digitizing just a little bit. I'm not like a professional at it by any means. Um, but I've used just a brilliant stitch artist. I have the brother version too, but it's too complicated. <laughs> Honestly, stitch artist was the easier of the two I have. So, oh, Louisiana charter school. And Liz, you're going to do homeschooling again in August. Barb, Designs by Juju has a big sale going on on Designs. Is it just me or they always have a big sale though? Use Chroma. Is that like a specific company's like, um, like machine company's software? I feel like it is, but I can't place which one it goes to. Is it Racoma maybe? I 
laptop's taking forever. Hey everyone, hey Nancy. Oh, it is for Macoma. Oh no, Bridget. Your only machine's in the shop. I remember those days. That is stressful. Terribly stressful. Barb used Hatch and Sierra Stitch era. I feel like maybe I've used that Stitch era like once. Like I maybe tried it. I don't remember. That was so long ago. I've heard good things about Hatch. I've just never tried it since I have Stitch Artist. Alejandra, yes, organizing. I. So I've been doing this for 10 years, so I have 10 years worth of files. A lot of the old, old stuff I don't even use anymore, but I'm not going to delete it either. But, like, my old organization system just doesn't work. Like, I tried to organize it by, like, Christmas designs in this folder and Halloween in this one and then just random stuff in their own folders. And, unfortunately, I didn't keep up with that. So what I did was I just make, a, like, a year folder for new stuff, thinking I'd go back and, like, reorganize. So, like, I have just a folder that says 2019, and anything I bought in 2019 was just dumped into that folder. And I have a new one for 2020, and everything was just dumped in there. And then now I'm, like, with a new laptop, and I'm trying to transfer everything over because not everything was backed up on it. It's a mess. Like, an absolute disaster. So I'm starting over on organizing. Especially as I'm putting it on this laptop, like, I'm not just dumping. I'm, like, going through <laughs> and deleting all, like, the files I don't use and everything. It's a disaster. <laughs> I think I just answered that, Alejandra. I do not keep... I keep basically the PES or the BX. Some... Occasionally with fonts, I'll keep the DST and BX instead of the PES, just because sometimes if there's an issue, DST seems to work a little bit better with fonts. Um, just my experience, I guess. But um, I don't keep everything. Um, the laptop I have now has a very, very small, like, hard drive. Um, it's one of the things, unfortunately, I had to... Um, compromise on just because it's like there's a shortage of good laptops right now along with everything else I guess but <clears throat> so and I needed one now and I didn't want to have one built or go to that kind of expense or go like so expensive above what I needed so I compromised on the hard drive space on my new laptop so I don't have a lot of space at all like I'm already at like 85% um, so I'm deleting um, anything I don't use because I figure out if I would get a different type of machine, I can always resave it with my software. Barb, yeah, that's actually what I'm redoing now. Like, I'm putting everything from each company I buy from in their own folder so that we at least. I can always use the search function to go find what I want, but um, that way I at least am not repurchasing things that I already have. Hopefully. Lotus energy drink from my local shop. 
I don't know what flavor it is. She made me something new. <clears throat> so uh, I've actually had my own website in the past, but I let it go. Um, the problem with having your own website is you have to drive your own traffic, and I'm not a pro with that. Um, I'm not good about marketing myself off of the site of Etsy. I should. I need to. Um, I know I need to, but I do not have my own website right now. Yes, it has blue lotus in it, and it has blueberry, and it has some flower flavoring in it. She's like, now, I'm not sure if you like this, but can you try it? I'm like, okay. Because I can never pick anyway, so she usually picks for me. But I don't really like the flower flavors in it, but it's not bad. It's just I probably won't order it again. Hi, Marissa. For the day what little that consists of these days but um have breakfast and then i do try to sit down and do like either from my phone laptop down here in my office kind of get prepped for the day like answer emails things like that set up files or do like edit videos if i have time um, and then she gets up at seven and it's pretty much all her until um lunch time and then um She's napping right now, so this is pretty much my time to get work done. Uh, she's lately been napping for about two hours, so I try to get as much work done then as I can. And then once she's up, we go to the post office to drop everything off. And uh, my husband gets home, and if, if, everything goes as planned. I usually come, try to come down once he's home for like an hour in the like late afternoon and just try to knock out some more stuff. Um, and then once she's in bed, I try to do some computer work again, like answer messages, set up files for the next day. Um, just any little thing I can get accomplished. I don't like running the machines at night when she's sleeping for some reason. It doesn't bother her during nap time, but it seems to bother her during at night. So it's like every time I do, I don't know if it's just complete coincidence, but she, she wakes up and, and putting her back to bed is impossible. So, um, Barb, you know I use a sport tech jacket. You ordered some of the ones with some holes and some without. Um, Sandmar actually just started, <laughs> see you Liz, um, Sandmar actually just started carrying actual scrubs. I don't know if you saw those on there. I have a couple samples here that I've had for like, since they started carrying them and I still, they're still sitting here. Um, they actually started carrying actual scrub tops. They have the button ones and then they have the zip ones. They're not sport tech brand. They're like a scrub brand. Um, they're thinner, like an actual scrub top, though. Um, I just haven't had a chance to 
mess with them. I just haven't made the time. I've had time. Um, if they need navy, though, that limits things. My favorite jacket style doesn't come in navy. Um, the one that's on the machine's navy. <laughs> it's... Let me show you. It's this style here. It's like a, it's a, one of their sport wick ones. It feels like a, like a smooth, like sport athletic material on the outside, but it feels like a sweatshirt on the inside. It's kind of that like medium weight type. These are probably, they're not my like big seller. Cut my head off. But they, um, they're nice to stitch on. I really like them. So. The other ones with the thumb holes, though, that I like do not have a navy. They have a gray with navy trim, but... Oh no, Nancy, you're soaked. I feel like it's finally stopped raining here. Like, it, it's rained, like, weeks on end this summer. And then it'll be like dry for a week, and then it'll rain for like another three weeks. Hi, Joy, welcome. All right, y'all, I need to get this name set up. I don't like this font. Does anyone else use the Farmhouse Lemonade font? It, I like, I like it, but it's, it's awkward to set up. Some of the letters are bigger or smaller than they should be. Like, I just struggle with it. Nancy, you got your Starbucks. Mmm. Ballerina's kind of my go-to one, although I do have a new go-to one now. I don't have it in many, like, on many items yet, but, like, I keep using it for my own daughter's stuff, and I really like it. So, it's easy to read, but it's kind of script. Marissa, I would gladly send you some of this train if that was possible. <laughs> yes, ballerina is one of my favorites. This one I did not use ballerina on, though, so... I just feel like some of the letters are like really tall and some of them are really short in this farmhouse lemonade font. And I know it's just the way it is, but I always have to adjust it because like each letter to make it look how I want it to. Yeah, Zoe asked what's everyone's favorite embroidery fonts. I can list my favorite places to buy fonts. And they're not what most people um, recommend. My preference first is Melissa, the free one. Yeah, but no. <laughs> I mean, I like free, but embroidery fonts is one thing. <laughs> you get what you pay for. I just told that in someone else, a group, like this morning. They're like, I use this font off of Etsy and I'm like, I'm not saying buying designs off Etsy is a bad thing because there are some very good designers on there, but you gotta be careful, especially with fonts. Bart, it's been hazy here too and that's what they're saying it is. And like the sunset's like super duper red. It's really pretty, but not for the reason it is. It's that smoke. Like, that's what they're telling me. Anyways. All this computer glitching. So my favorite place to buy fonts, um, favorite place is the it's the itch to stitch. Um, they have tons of fonts. 
Um, the second place I like getting them is Embroidery Boutique. And I'd say the third place is Applique Market. Um, I always kind of forget about them, but their fonts are really good. Like good quality, well digitized. Um, I have a lot of fonts from a couple other places and they're more hit and miss, I guess. Um, I like Stitchtopia as well. Um, let's see, where else? I'm gonna be honest, I've, I've tried a lot of the, and everyone else is gonna disagree with me on this. Designed by Juju is one I don't like. Um, theirs are hit and miss for me. Creative appliques, hit and miss. She does have some good ones. Um, I, yeah, nothing against her at all. It's hit and miss on actual digitized quality of her fonts. Now her designs, 100%, I will promote every day, but fonts are hit and miss. And this is all just my own personal preference and opinion, so take that for what it's worth. Um, what are some other ones? River Mill. That's kind of in. Yeah, Nancy. Uh, some of hers I love, but then there's a couple of them I just, I use. And I wish they weren't on my font list. I need to put a new font list out. I had one made and almost ready, but then, you know, didn't have it saved and laptop crashed. Barb. Yeah, you have to watch some of those. The larger ones. Yeah. And same with, yeah, same with River Mill. Um, some are great. Some are eh. And a lot of them, like, it's just me being picky. Honestly, they stitch perfectly fine to use. I'm just being picky about it. But there's so many fonts out there. I feel like you can be picky if you want to. scheduled to ship next week because I just took my monogram shop crazy for doing this I took it from two weeks down to one week production time and didn't like catch up first so I'm trying to use like while I'm slow to like I'm just pushing myself to do it this week so I have a lot more that I actually should be doing today but I wanted to go live so Barb, the fancy Schuler Studio fonts. Oh, yeah. I, I'll i be honest, I don't own any of those, but they are awesome looking. Um, hey, Carolyn, welcome. Hey, T. Hey, Mar hey, Liz. Marissa wants to know if you've used your embroidery machine yet. Yeah, actually, and I kind of keep forgetting because it's not on my list here, but um, I have three things I need to test stitch today, too. So I should probably get those downloaded and get those going, too. Um, but I have one more kid's shirt that needs to go. I just finished this one. This is actually probably one of my um, favorite fonts. It's I Miss Your Kiss um, from The Itch to Stitch. 
There are a few letters in it though. Um, I don't love. So sometimes I swap out, um, like, the, especially like the capital letters for another font or script font. I have a couple fonts that I like go to and pull letters out of. Um, what was it earlier this week? It was a capital I. The capital I looks the exact same as a lowercase I with a little heart dot on it, which is cute, but it didn't look like a capital I. It was just like a little bit bigger. So I went and found one that I thought kind of had the same like looping and thickness to it to match that looked like an eye. Oh, yay, Liz! Get those orders done. All right, Nancy, drive safe. I feel like Nancy's going somewhere every day. Yes, Dawn, capital I, J, Q, and T, capital T's in um, script fonts. Like I said, in, I just watched Angela's video this morning and she kind of went on a rant about that too. It's like, you name your kid, you should know that a script T looks like that. But if it looks funny, I either substitute or I just send them uh, like a digital preview of how it's gonna look for the name. And then I like send them a preview of it with a different font too. And they occasionally want the original <laughs> Nancy. They occasionally want the um, script T, but they usually want you to swap it out. Um, so, all right, back to the font. <sighs> Y'all, my embrilliance is like locking up. I don't know what the issue is. Let's just restart it. Hi, neighbor Liz. Carolyn, do you live in Illinois too? Yep. Yeah. I... Zoa, that's right. That oopsie daisy one doesn't have a. I think there's. I think that's. Is that a Unicase font? I think it is. <laughs> Nancy. Uh... Yeah, Don, I always give them a deadline in that initial message. Like, if you don't respond to me by X date, I'm going to use this. I found that on Etsy, like, if they don't have their app notifications on or they didn't order from the app, like, they don't have it on their phone, um, those message, like, emails that go directly to their email um, do not oftentimes get filtered to um, spam. Or junk. Uh, so one thing that I've learned also, though, is if you update that ship by date, if you use that tool on Etsy, those emails go to their inbox. So if you're not getting someone to respond, try that too. Um, once I mean, once you get to their estimated ship date, if it's gonna be late. Um, so I do that too. And sometimes I I hate taking any type of message off Etsy because I feel like I want it there on Etsy for my own safety and like proof. Um, but I will email them and say, Hey, I've sent you some Etsy messages. I need clarification. Can you check? Um, and then also if I've sent multiple messages and they don't respond, I kind of include like a blurb at the bottom of the message on, Hey, responding to the email, doesn't respond to me. You need to log into Etsy. And that sometimes gets them to respond too. I think some people just don't know that. So just some thoughts 
if you're not already doing those things. Um, right. Yeah, so I don't, I don't, I only message them if it's something like super funky looking. Like I don't proof everyone's. I would, I would spend all day doing that. Um, now if they ask for it after they've paid, then I will. Um, but <clears throat> I do not do on a regular basis proof designs for people unless it's one of those fonts that just doesn't look quite right. And I'm not sure. Um, there's some fonts. I just go ahead and switch it. I don't even ask. Yes, Marissa, take some, take some notes on the fonts. Seriously, there's so many, so many places you can buy fonts right now, or designs for that matter. Um, like I'm just re-realizing that like with downloading um, some stuff that I didn't have backed up. It's like, even I've bought from so many different places in the last couple of years. See you later, Jill. <laughs> so you are from Illinois, Carolyn, then? I'm from like, more like central, west central Illinois. I know Liz is like Chicago suburb area. I'm assuming that's where you're from too, since you said neighbor. I feel like I've heard that before. I think like I've, maybe I've asked you that before. <laughs> those darn vans I don't have a van but I went from like a full-size SUV down to like a mid-size SUV thinking I'd get better gas mileage I get like 19 and it irritates me it's like I should have just kept my big old like Yukon I had a Yukon XL like the extended length one I should have just kept it I get no better gas mileage. Oh, you guys live like 10 minutes from each other. That's cool. I'm pretty sure no one here lives anywhere near me. And to be honest, that's okay. Miss Lady D, you're from the Chicago area too. Sorry, Shayna. <laughs> Have a good rest of your day. This is like the only time I can go live because it's nap time. Otherwise, it just wouldn't go well. <laughs> Zoa, yep, never hurts to reassess and realign to what works best for you. That's for sure. I've, I'll be honest, I've done that several times in my own business. It's just kind of evolved. You live in the South Burbs. So fun fact, I don't really talk about this much, but um, we should set up a Midwest meetup. I went to college in the Chicago suburbs, so I kind of know like some areas a little bit. Laura, have I tried ESA fonts? Is that like a certain company or something? That doesn't sound familiar to me, but. Hi, Mina. Oh, ESA's Hatch. I have not. I don't have Hatch. I've heard it's great, but I've just never, I've never used it myself yet. 
one of the many things on my I want to do list, but not there yet. <laughs> That's cool, Zoa. That sounds like fun. Oh, that's... Okay, so are the ESA fonts kind of like BX fonts with Embrilliance then? That would be fun, Liz. Meet up at the Lincoln Park Zoo or Brookfield Zoo. Yeah, I'd need plenty of extra notice on that, but we could probably do that sometime. Although I really don't know how Blakely would do with a four hour car or train ride. She's at the age where she doesn't like sitting still for that long. Hi Bernadette, welcome. I have been thinking about going to, have you, if, my mouth, have any of you guys ever been to like a trade show called the Dax show? Um, it's, there's one in the Chicagoland area. I've been to it a couple times. Have any of you guys locally, um, been to that or one in your area? Liz, is Springfield any fun? Haven't been down there yet. I'm like an hour, hour, hour and a half from Springfield, so we don't go there very often. Sorry, Nancy. <laughs> you can come to Chicago too. Yeah, I wanted to go last year, but it's canceled, like everything else. They, It looks like they really are going to have it this year, though, so. I've been in the past. I will say that the Dax show is a little bit more geared towards, like, non-home-based businesses, like, more commercial-type businesses, but um, there's still a lot of good information so you can hook up with some suppliers there um look at different equipment it's always nice to see equipment in person before you buy like i've never made any major purchases at a show like that but it is nice to go and see that and know that it is a resource um so yes dax dax it's in tenley park like i said it's I went, it obviously didn't go last year. They didn't have it last year. I went the year, year before. Yeah. I think I drove up for the day. Like, I've never done any of the classes or anything. I've always just went for the trade show and walked around and looked at stuff. It's probably um, too far to, for me to drive <laughs> for just that. But I've made it, I went twice, I think. Twice. Once a long time ago, and then once two years ago. Bernadette, you're going to impressions. I've heard that's a good one. Yeah, y'all that are in the area should go to it and check it out. It's free. I mean, there's no cost to it other than just getting yourself there. You can sign up for classes and all that fun stuff, but the trade show and actually entrance to it, as long as you register, like, at least, I think it's like three or four days in advance, it's free. So, doesn't hurt to go. Don, I think there are, honestly. Um, I don't know of any specifically. I don't really keep up on the ones that are not in the Midwest, because <laughs> I'm probably not going to go, but I feel like there are ones that are in Orlando area, or have been in the past.
I think I finally got this one simple file set up. What? 40 minutes later? <laughs> I knew that would happen. Good evening, Leanne. Welcome from England. Barb, Zoa asked, do you batch sew the clothes and sell them ready to ship or do you make to order? You're trying to figure out what's best. Um... I think my concern, at least starting out, would be selling them. Um, I know the question wasn't for me because I don't do it, but that's just my opinion. You do made to order custom. I feel like once you have a, like a large following and like you can do releases and stuff like that, you could probably do made ahead, but that'd be tough with not like not having like a very loyal group of customers to start if that makes sense hey Jan welcome there was another one recently in Chicago or maybe it was like honestly it might have been like last week I don't know. Or this week. I don't. It was during the week, though. So I I had looked at it several times and thought about it, but there was no way I was going to be able to go um, just because I don't have child care during the week. It was ASI. Does that sound right to anyone? Let me Google it. ASI Chicago. Oh, it's right now. July 19th through the 21st in Chicago. Downtown. I knew it was, it was like a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I knew that was never going to happen. All right. So Dax, Chicago... It is, Dax Chicago is August 27th and 28th this year. It's usually in May, um, but with Illinois regulations, they pushed, and like the availability of the event center, they pushed it back until August. So hopefully everything stays how it is now and they can actually have it. Leanne, you just got your biggest Etsy order. Congratulations. all be hot pink. That should all be black. check on the thread colors if I don't remember does anyone else have to pull up their own picture to double check that you're doing it right all right black and hot pink that's what I thought all right now the only bad thing about 
me transferring all my designs via cable for my computers, I'm going to have to take it across the room and plug it in now. should be over here now. Jan, how do you do your blanks inventory? Um, so I have two different types of blanks, so I do them completely different. Let's just start there. Um, for kids' shirts, I keep stock on hand. I keep only white, though. Um, I There's a couple colors I keep, like, one of each size, and I don't advertise them. Um, but I do have them for people if they ask. Like, black, gray, pink. And that's it. Um, I When I started out, I didn't keep a lot of inventory, um, but I built that up by, like, so if I'd sell one size 3T, when I ordered that, I'd order two extras. One, if I messed up, and then two, so I could start building that inventory um, without having to pay for it all up front. Um, so nowadays, I keep, like, when I order, I try to make sure I have, like, six of each of my popular sizes and four or five of the ones I use less frequently. And that always seems to change, honestly. But um, that's kind of my rule of thumb. Um, and then s as we're going into fall soon, I'll start... Kind of beefing up my long sleeve inventory too for kids shirts um but how i do my monogram shop is completely different um, i do have some stock on hand um, it's mostly stuff i've ordered either just incorrectly they've sent me the wrong thing someone's canceled past the cancellation date um they've wanted to change sizes things that i've just accumulated um, and i try to use those up as i go um, but then i also recently have been starting to keep like one on hand in my popular sizes and colors um, for my jackets there's no way I would be able to stock like all these different style jackets in every size and every color like extra small through 4x men's and women's and like six different colors times like 10 different jacket styles there's no way I'd be able to I don't have enough room and I don't want that kind of overhead cost either, to be honest. Um, so I order those twice a week, uh, Monday and then either Thursday or Friday, just depending on the amount. Um, as for storage, um, keep saying I'm going to do that video. Hopefully I'll get around to that soon. Time guys, time. Um, I have storage, like little stackable bins in my um, closet back here for my kids' shirts. Unfortunately, you cannot buy them anymore. They came from Walmart like more than five years ago. I know I had them when I lived, when I was single and lived on my own. I had them before then. So that was at least, I've lived down here for five years now. So it's been longer than that. So I'd say eight to 10 years ago. <laughs> Um, and they were like six or seven dollars and unfortunately you can't find those anymore. Um, so that's how I store them. I know I've shown that in a couple past videos, but I couldn't even tell you which ones. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get that video at some point. But that's how I handle blanks. Um, I don't know if that answered your question or not. Man, it's 17 popsicle sleeves to one lady. That's pretty cool.
Trisha, yes, I do buy the jackets as the orders come in. Um, I have been running a two week production time because of that, um, because it's been hard to ensure that I can get the jackets in time with a one week production time. Just Monday out of the blue, I decided I'm just gonna bite the bullet and get it back down to one week because my sales have been slower. Um, so I'm hoping that with stock inventory stock coming back in with the manufacturers, with the warehouses, that um, it's going to get, it has been a little easier these past couple weeks getting what I need. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to get everything I need in quickly now. Um, I'll definitely be keeping an eye on it. And if I can't order in what I need fast enough, um, like for, like if I need to order it from warehouses across the country, then I'll probably bump my production time back up because I I just don't have the space or want the overhead costs of keeping that much inventory on hand. Yeah, Leanne, I don't, I'll be, I don't know if you don't have that a lot for here, nurses in England, because it's at one big health organization. That could be possibly why maybe they require them to, or don't allow them to wear things. I know I've been asked to ship um, to that area, but I, I've always declined. I'll ship to Canada and I've shipped to Australia for my nurse jackets. My kids' shirts I've shipped elsewhere before. But some of the, um, I don't remember the name of it, some of like the requirements on requiring that you take refunds or exchanges or returns for so many days, and now the new like things you have to put on the packaging to send it and stuff, it's just, I've limited my shop and just not done that. I've just offered in the U.S. only, and then Canada, um, I've reopened back up to shipping to Canada again for my nurse jackets. I actually get, I mean, not a lot of orders, but a decent amount. Like one or two a week, so that's not too bad. Hello, Olivia. Welcome. What poly mesh do I use? Um, I use the stuff from Allstitch. Um, various sizes, but it's the, I don't know what they call it. It's just, I use mostly six by six, um, but I also stock eight by eight and 10 by 10. I don't know if my packages will say. No, I don't have any, I don't have any packages. So I usually carry A or B blanks, but I've been ordering more AJ blanks, and I just had someone ask for a size 14, um, so I'm going to start stocking AJ blanks definitely in size 14. Um, I'm one of those people that I, if I can offer a size to someone, I do. I don't think you should limit yourself just because there's a size. like. I saw other shops on Etsy that make the same things I do. They only carry like small to XL. You want to know how many like two, three, and four XLs I make? I mean, why are why would they limit themselves? I don't understand that. So that's my other suggestion for people wanting to open up to sales is have all the sizes available that you can get. Um, I did not have size 14 listed, but when someone asked me, I knew AJ Blanks carried up to a 14. So I said yes, and I added that option for her. Yes, so I am too. Like, in the I've been asked for these bigger sizes in the past, but with using before AJ Blanks was available, I mean, no one carried a fourteen without going with like a store bought um, blank or moving up into like juniors or women's sizes for those. Um, 
items. Yeah, I'm glad they have 14. I would like to even see a 16 because this is actually going to be for a ninth birthday. So, I mean, it's the kids shirt is still the appropriate style in my opinion. Yeah, that's a great idea, Barb. Especially if you have in person. I don't do that exactly, but back in the day, <laughs> it's not been updated for a couple of years. I had a binder. I'd always print, I'd try to print off my, like, uh, like the picture that came with fonts and put it in a binder. And so if I'm, I'm looking for something specific, like in a font, I can flip through there versus flipping through stuff on the computer. Sometimes that's faster or easier. Sometimes it's space limitation, so you only carry up to an eight. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Some some designs, you know, no one's ever going to order on a size 14, but for my purposes, I keep the same sizes available across the board. Um, that way they can pick what they want. And I know I've mentioned before in another live, and again, I need to do a video on it. I use a bulk editor to edit my things, so every, I can go in, say if 5T ruffle sleeves are out of stock and I can't get them, I can go mark that unavailable and it goes across all of my listings that's attached to it. Um, it's super duper helpful <laughs> in those cases. Um, I've had to use it before for those purposes. I use it all the time in my nurse shop, like especially this past year when stock's been crazy. Like... In one of my popular styles, I can't get black and an XL and a 2X. Those are like my two big sellers. You know, black's the most common color and, you know, large through 2X are my major sizes. Oh, yeah, Craftique by Row. Yeah, I would not, yeah, I would probably limit tutus. If I was still doing those as well, I probably wouldn't do that big. Um, but yeah, shirt sizes. I'm talking, yeah, I'm talking like standard blank type stuff. Um, yeah, two twos, I probably wouldn't. That big. <laughs> That'd be heavy and a lot of tool. Um, let's see. Craftique, um, it's called Vela, V-E-L-A. It's Git. G-E-T, Vela, V-E-L-A, dot com. Um, if you go into the, on Etsy, I think, that, what do they call them, integrations, you can find it there, um, and you have to link your Etsy shop to it. Um, the nice thing is, is if you have multiple Etsy shops, you can have multiple shops attached to that account for that bulk editor. Um, I've been using it for years. I used a different one for a long time, and then there was some glitch, and they didn't, like, comply with Etsy's whatever and they were shut down. And then, so I didn't have one for a couple of years. And then this um, Vela opened up and they, and it's free. That's, that's even the best part. It's free. Um, it's a little tedious to set up. Um, but once you get it set up and have um, your listings attached to it, it's super easy. The only downfall for me is like, if I list a new item in my Etsy shop, <laughs> I usually go forget to go into there and like link that with the appropriate profile. So like if I, my kids shop's not really as much so for this, but like if I list a new jacket style on this, I have to go in and list it, like link it up to this profile. So if I ever make changes to the profile for this specific jacket style, um, it'll update all of them and not just the few. Because I've had the problem in the past where, like, I'll go and change pricing or change availability, but then I'll miss one or two listings because they're not linked. Um, it can only do what you tell it to, I guess. Yeah, let me link that for you here. Let me see if that links right for you guys. Hey, 
maybe not. I don't think that actually linked it, um, but that is the website I just posted. If you guys want to check it out, you type it in. Um, it's free and it integrates. It's um, on Etsy's approved um, integration list. size big then run small so Bridget um when did I get all my machines or when did you decide to get all those machines like a lot of people I started on a single needle back 10 years ago it's been 10 years now yeah it's 10 years this fall and I've slowly built it up. Um, got my first single needle, basically ran it to the ground. Um, when it was starting to kind of get iffy, I bought a second one used um, that's old. And I actually still have it. It actually still works. Um, it has a sewing machine on it, so I keep it as my sewing machine. I don't embroider with it anymore. Um, then a couple months later, I was able to find a used old six needle um, at a local machine shop near me. And then um, I had that one for a probably a year before I added on again. Um, and I got another one of those machines. So I used to have two of the old six needles. One, something was going wrong on. Um, I had it in to be serviced several times, just couldn't quite get it fixed. And he offered, knowing there was something wrong with it, to let me trade it in and for almost the price I paid for it. So I took him up on it and I got that tin needle. Um, it was a floor model. Um, so it wasn't like brand new, but it's closest to new I've ever had. So, and then a couple years after that, I got the third one. Um, it's, I bought used at a dealer for like half the price of new and it only had 36 hours on it. The lady had had it for two years and it put 36 hours on it. She decided that it was too much for her and she wanted to go back down to a single needle because she only made stuff for her grandkids. And so she traded it back in for a single needle. I, I understand people do this as a craft and not like for business, but I could not imagine wanting to go back to a single needle. Oh, Bridget, you're yeah, needing to invest. Yeah, those investments, and they're expensive investments is the problem. Um, each time I, I invested in a new machine, I needed it to keep up. Um, you know, I had to have, what is going on outside? I had to have it to keep up. 
Um, I used to work, before I got married, I used to work full-time as a nurse, plus do this on the side full-time. And my business is actually busier then than it is now. And that's my own doing. Like, I've forced myself to slow it down. Um, but then after I was married, like, the week I got back from my honeymoon, I put my two weeks notice. <laughs> um, and I've been doing this at home ever since. I basically stayed as a nurse for an additional year or two just to keep insurance and benefits for myself. Um, but yeah. I completely understand it's buying used is it could be a risk um, but I mean if you're getting something for half the cost of new or less I will say that each machine that I bought you well other than the single needle every other machine that I bought used like all these three all came from a dealer they all came with a one-year warranty um, so that helped me feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, and it's still the, well, that one, I don't go to that shop anymore. Usually I wouldn't go back to that shop anymore unless they had a machine I really wanted. Um, but these two, um, I bought from the shop that services my machines now. So, so, I mean, you do take a risk with a, with a used machine, but my recommendation is either, um, Make sure you're not either not paying very much for it if you're just buying it off of someone or buy it from a dealer. Um, sometimes dealers have wait lists though for used machines. Yeah, so I've got myself in problems with that when I first started out with just the one single needle machine. Um, but that's all I could afford then. Um, so Trisha, what were I making with the single needles? I was doing kids birthday shirts and kids shirts in general. Um, that was, that was back before even HTV shirts got super popular. So like people would order them with like little sayings and stuff on them, like that you honestly don't sell much of for kids shirts anymore, um, for embroidery, um, because that's kind of been taken over by HTV and sublimation. Craftique, what do most do for insurance? I have a separate policy through our homeowners insurance. Insurance. It's not part of the homeowner's insurance, but it's just through the same company. And it's, I'll be honest, it's not all that cheap. And it's due soon. Mm. Yeah, there's, and there's so many companies. That's the other thing. There's so many companies. Um, if you're buying more of a commercial machine, you may not be able to find a used one, like just through any dealer. Um, if you're going to go baby or brother lock, though, um, baby lock or brother, I think I flipped that. <laughs> um, anyways, um, I would find a dealer local or check out several local, to be honest. And if you're getting, if you're looking at a brother or baby lock get multiple quotes even if there's one only 20 minutes from you and the next one's an hour hour and a half get multiple quotes you usually have to go in person but it is so much you might find that it's so much cheaper um i dr we have one baby lock dealer here where i live now i'm like 30 minutes from me their prices for machines is they don't sell like the multi-needle like they would order one in for me if I wanted it, but they don't sell, they don't make a habit out of selling those. And their prices were astronomical comparatively. Like I, as much as I want to support a local business, there's no way I can. Um, so I actually still go to the dealer I bought these from and that's a hundred miles away from me, from where I live now. I used to live a lot closer to them, um, but from where I live now, they're a hundred miles away, one way. So. Jan, you ended up buying a new Brother Six Needle um, because there were just no, sorry, it went away. There were no used ones other than really old ones. Yeah, that's also the issue. Um, it's definitely become a popular um, 
hobby for a lot of people. A lot of people have started a business and they're harder to find. They've always been hard to find used in good condition, but I think it's gotten even harder in the past year for sure. Okay, got a little, I've got a little bit of time left, not too much. Oh, she's starting to wake up, but I need to get that shirt done. Um, welcome back, Liz. <laughs> Your break turned into a kid's snack fest. That's sounds about right. I will say also like some of these machines like I've waited for like I wanted to upgrade and I waited and waited and waited until one became available too um and I'm not a very patient person but on stuff like that but if I don't I know I talk, we talk about this on every time I'm live but I don't know what my next machine is going to be do I want another one yes do I know when I have no clue um, when or what it will be at this point. Don, you bought machines used from a dealer and they had a warranty for six months. Yeah, mine had, had a year warranty, so that was amazing. And actually on one of them, one of the old six needles, I actually had to utilize that warranty, so I'm glad it, they had it. Like the port, the old six needles do not have a USB drive where you can plug the USB in, but they have um, where you can hook them up with like this little cable. It's on the back of the machine instead of there on the side. Um, and that went out on one of them. So the only way you could transfer designs until it was fixed was by floppy drive. Yeah, floppy drive. Needless to say, I got it in super fast to get it fixed. Floppy drive, you vaguely remember those. So, the second single needle I bought takes floppy drives too. That's why, like, I, that's what I'm struggling with, with, I've had so many requests to do, like, a basic applique tutorial on a single needle. So, I pulled out my old PE700. That was before the 770, before the 750, 700. I knew there was something wrong with it, and that's why I stopped using it. I thought it was the motor, and I was like, well, maybe I can just tear it apart and figure it out. No, it's the computer that's wrong on it. Like, it turns on, it acts like it's going to work, and then it just shuts itself off and restarts. I'm like, oh, that's what it is. I remembered. It's been so long since I've used it. So I have this old machine, but I'm afraid to do a tutorial on it because I'm afraid that some it won't be helpful to someone that's brand new um, because they're going to see that it's a different machine and it's going to be hard to like look past that and see like how to do the actual applique. And the same thing, I have a 4x4 machine, but it's not one of the newest models. Um, so I'm afraid to do... A tutorial using those because I'm afraid that it might not be helpful for someone that's new and I also at the same time don't want to go out and spend a lot of money on a single needle I'm only going to use for a tutorial so I'm thinking about it I'm trying to decide what to do and what's going to be most helpful so
Bridget. You have a PE 800 that's having issues. You live in Tallahassee and there's not many sewing centers. You have to travel 100 or more miles. I feel you on that. I actually have one that's closer. I just, like I said, I won't. I don't go there. I actually use an out-of-state <clears throat> brother dealer for my machines. losing connection here the brother 800 it's like the pe 800 it's the single needle that's the newest of the brothers like entry level five by seven machines but i had the 700 that's how long ago i started on it ones that'll stay on my head they're just they're like the fold over elastic that you use for like baby headbands I just took some regular some like length of it I don't remember the length and tied it knotted it and that's what I use for my headbands so they cost me like nothing and they're the only thing that works that actually stay on my head Yeah, and that wasn't even bad. Like, if I'd leave that headband off for 10 minutes, like, like, back here especially, and they stick straight out. That was my way of controlling it so I could feel like I could come on live today. Because <laughs> I was not about ready to do my hair. But they don't... They stay on my head okay, but even these still do slide so. <laughs> Lee and Fuzzy Hair Club too. <laughs> And my, that's the other problem. My hair has, I mean, I have it up in a ponytail or a bun 99% of the time, but it does have some like natural, like, it's not curly. It's like messy, wavy. Like it looks like a little kid that hasn't brushed their hair type of curl. Like it's not, it's not a pretty curl. So I either straighten it or I put it up usually. But as a result, I get all this extra gunk going on. Leanne, exactly. No, my baby is 16 months old. And like, I didn't even say it out loud because I was worried about jinxing myself. But I thought to myself when she was about a year old, I'm like, hey, maybe I like miss this whole postpartum hair loss thing. No, I didn't. That's when it started. Okay. 
And then now I'm regaining all these little baby hairs and they were bad beforehand and now they're just out, out of control. put any coffee at all. And I'm not a coffee drinker, but I don't want sugar milk either. Although I do like my Dunkin' lattes, so that's basically like mocha lattes. So it's basically like chocolate milk with a little bit of coffee flavor. So what do I know?
Make a plan. Get it done. blanket or just scrap piece of fabric because keeping those pit shirts inside out on uh, a PE 700 is tough, especially starting out. bodysuit on the five by seven that's a little rough but as I got back when I did the single needle as I got more comfortable I actually switched from hooping to floating yep like Carolyn said she doesn't hoop anything um, some people are so anti hooping though I think it's a good thing to know how to do Because there's definitely, like, good um, things to use it for. And Nancy's team float, too.
Yeah, Barb, that makes scooping so much easier, too. Those magnetic scoops are just... Awesome. I do still have and use um, non-magnetic scoops. I know I show that every once in a while. But... easier to float. needed done done can you guys hear that <laughs> I'm being paged by a baby <laughs> she's saying ma 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 through the monitor uh, Marissa I have a cameo silhouette four. I don't have a brother scan and cut and I have done a video on it um, on how to use it to like pre-cut your applique fabric. Um, and I go over it in detail in that video, but 
I use it just for certain instances, to be honest. I use it for these shirts. This is what I started using it for because these are a pain in the rear to trim out all these letters. Um, that or I just don't like doing it. It's probably it, but it's so much faster and easier to do it that way. Um, I did hand trim those just because I was, didn't want to get it all out, but, but especially if I'm doing a lot of the same thing, it does come in handy. It's faster, but I wouldn't get it out for single applique pieces. It's not any faster for that. Hey, Nero, I am finishing up. Baby girl's um, waking up from her nap, so I'm going to have to get off. I'm not going to be on much longer. I've accomplished one shirt <laughs> while live, and otherwise I've basically been chatting. Uh, and one jacket. One jacket. So. Not super productive, but it happens. Um, so I'm going to heat press these three shirts real quick, and then I'm going to package them up. We need to ship. What are you working on today, Nairo? When do you think you'll have another live? Um... My goal is to do one every week. I have not been good about that here lately. Um, honestly, just haven't been struggling, trying to get stuff done. Um, but going forward, my goal is once a week and then to upload a video once or twice a week. So I'm going to try to get better about that again. Um, if and when I do lives, they're almost always this time of day. Um, because I need to do it around nap time since my daughter's home and I there's no way I could go live with her running around down here too that would be absolute chaos um she'd probably be st <laughs> I turned my back for three seconds the other day and she was standing on my cutting table so she doesn't come down with here with me very often anymore um because she climbs now apparently so it's usually during her nap time um I'm Central time, central in the U.S. time. So it's between like somewhere between 12 and 3 p.m. Um, Fridays, it, I could kind of sometimes go live different times just because I have childcare that day. But I usually don't because that's my only day to work all day. And that's the day I usually vlog for you guys. So Nancy, she is a daredevil. She's a daredevil. I brought her little, she has like a little tykes, you know, one of those little plastic chair and tables in here so she could color the other day. And apparently that makes a great step stool for things. Who knew? So I'm, I know you guys can't see me. I'm just heat pressing my shirts real quick. I do, I don't use Tinder Touch, but I use the all stitch version of that. I think it's called Cover Stitch or Cover A Stitch. Uh, I buy the big, huge bolt of it and then just cut my pieces down to size. Uh, I've, I really try to buy in bulk whenever I save money on it. And I usually go through stuff quickly. <laughs> that way I'm also always not like running around trying to find a coupon and all the things. So. And I'm sorry if you guys just heard that. Sorry, I had a phone call coming in. Hopefully that's still working. Ooh, you're working on new samples. You have 10 more to finish. That's fun. I actually, yeah, I was supposed to make three new samples this afternoon. I forgot again. Dang it. All right. I'll do that though. Once, once I get back from the post office, unfortunately I won't be live to do that, but I will be, I do have three more samples I have to make tonight. 
um, as test stitches for uh, one of the applique companies. Some new back to school. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was getting a phone call. I didn't even realize it. Y'all probably knew before me. Yeah, I should be leaving for the post office right now. one. I want to at least get these unicorn ones in the mail, if nothing else, because they're time sensitive. All right. That one actually is too. Yeah, no, totally my phone. My, I didn't see it until it's too late, and I know in order to answer the call, like, I can't even get off live to answer the call, and it was my husband calling, so I'm gonna have to get off and call him back. Like, I have to decline the call to even get off live to answer it, so it's crazy. But... guys I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go like I said I've got to go to the post office I should be leaving already and I'm not baby girl's awake and she's chatting at me through the monitors so um I will try to go live again someday next week and I should have a video up for you guys again on either Thursday or Friday um so I'll see you guys later